How's it, my bros? I'm back, and I'm taking off the teenage dream of building myself a downhill bike and riding it in Schladme. This time, we're going to crack on with building the swing arm. As you know from the previous video, I'm building two gaffers, so I need two swing arms. Before I can build the swing arms, though, I need a couple of bits. So we're going to fire Cindy up and make uh, main pivot housing and some link bosses. I need the swing arms in order to build the front triangles, so that's why we're building them first. You'll see why I need the swing arms to build the front triangles when we get to the front triangle section of the build series. So you'll have to hang tight. The main pivot housings look like this. The drive side one is a bit thinner than the non-drive side. And then we've got the link bosses, like this. And then the uh, soft jaws that I've got set, like this, can fit three in. So I'm going to machine six of these link bosses just because I have some spares in stock won't be a bad thing, will it? First thing we've got to do is machine out the soft jaws. Like this. So let's crack on with that then, shall we? All right, so program is <coughs> loaded in the machine. Time to press go. Go single block, because I always fuck shit up. stock for the link bosses off one, load it in there, let's press go. Measuring stick on there first. Before we go anywhere, get too excited. 30 on the button, 29.99. It's a good job I did make those two extra because we've got two rejects so far. That one that came loose in the rice, and then this one, stock wasn't long enough. Oh. So I flipped those soft jaws over, now to zero in, so we can make the soft jaws to hold these. Op two. Right, the operation ones of the link bosses are loaded in the vice, ready for operation two. We just crossed everything goes to plan. So the outer contour didn't go down quite far enough. We've got a little bit of a lip there. So I'll just set it another 0.5 mil down. Hopefully that sorts it out. I flipped them over the other way and did it. And it's still a bit rough. I think the um, diameters are not right in the soft jaws or whatnot and it's offsetting it slightly. It'll do, it's all getting welded up. Angle ground, stuff like that. Doesn't matter too much. We need another set of soft jaws for the vice for the main pivot here, so that's what I'm machining out. I'm gonna need some for up, up to the main pivots and for the bolt holes and the slot up three. I use S355 for the link boss and the main pivot housing. I could use your regular old mild steel for these bits because the thickness of the parts is where the majority of the strength comes from. The S355 has slightly better properties and not a lot of extra cost. I've got this bore, it's a bit undersized. So I'm gonna run a contour to clean that up Try and get it up to size. Alright, let's see if that was successful, shall we? Right, what are we reading this time? 30.01, 30.0, pretty good. Well, I want it to be a bit looser so we can fit a bearing in there. 30.02, max tolerance. So I noticed when machining this one out that the um, adaptive clearing was having a hard time with the bore. So I'm gonna drill a hole through before the adaptive goes so that we've got some uh, 
clearance for the cutter as it's going through. I've got this little carbide drill, a little stubby carbide. Let's set it up in here first. So we've got to go and do all of that. Need a better setup for clamping tools to tighten them, but this is where we are at the moment. So this is what you get. Got some new pull studs the other day. One of those at uh, like a, an auction. Machine shop is closing down. Got a bunch of those. Nice cheap deal on them. All right, let's get it height set on the machine. Got the height set on the drill now. Got to get the old stock clamped in the vise. Okay, we're good to press go. Hopefully the drilling is not too gnarly. Keep my thumb hovering over the emergency stop. She loved it, didn't she? Right, we're looking good. Uh, I just had to run the contour one more time with no like stock offset or anything like that, just to sort of clean up pass. And it's come out pretty much bang on. So, off one, these are done now. I'm gonna make some soft jaws to do off two. These are the, gonna be the soft jaws. Not so soft, because they're made out of steel. We'll do the job. Let's have it. So I think my problem with these being slightly off when we've got this little divot here was that I didn't make the stock long enough. And so I had to, you know, do two operations halfway down the piece. Whereas if I had a longer stock, I could have machined the whole of the outside and the inside in one up and then just faced the other side off which is what I'm doing here. So that was all done in one operation, the bores and the outsides. And so it's just decking off the excess stock to do on this operation and then some chamfers. So we should end up with a much nicer final piece. Soft jaws are done. Pop them there like that and then faced off. Fish bash bosh. Should we do it? these jaws so they can hold the main pivots to do the bolt holes. Main pivot up three then, we're going to do a bore for the bolt head at the top here, then we're going to drill for the threads in the clearance, uh, we're going to take them out and tap it by hand, then we've got the slot cutter, it's a bit sketchy, a bit worried about this one, um, mainly because speeds and feeds is a bit of an issue, but then also it's going to be super close to the vice just here, you can see. Right, here comes the sketchy one, slot cutter. Annoying. There's something about these pull studs I got the other day that it just doesn't like. Um, this little recess here, little divot. Peter says no. So I swapped it over to a different stud. Going to chop into that bike. Of 
Yikes. Yikes. So, looks pretty good. Slots back nice. The, the trace on the chamfer for the hole is not so nice though. So we're gonna sort that out. I ran the last few off last night. It's looking pretty sweet. Tidy little chamfer on the holes there. Slot came out pretty good. I've had a bit of a mishap though. I tapped one of them. The tap did not like it. Oh no, look, I've tapped two of them. The tap was not enjoying it though. And it snapped in this one. So I need to make another one of these. Which means I'm going to need to make another two. Because they come in pairs. Shouldn't take as long this time though, because we've got all the soft jaws and all the setups already done. Changed a few tool paths here and there. Gonna put a big old um, chamfer on these edges. Gonna cut another bit of stock. First job. Rolling deep. Right, so that's up one done. See that big old shampoo I've put on there? Looking pretty sweet. So first time around when I made these parts, I wasn't intending on taking the soft jaws out and then putting them back in again. So I wasn't super accurate in getting a zero point. So I'm a bit worried putting these in this time that there's gonna be a slight variation in offsets. So what I'm gonna do is deck this off first, get rid of the excess stock at the top. And then I'm going to redo my origin. I'm going to redo my origin of the center of one of these bores. So yeah, get this mounted in, in the vise. And then get our zeros sorted out. The trouble with this old girl is that she likes to remind me that she's old. I've had a couple of uh, pendant failures today. So it says that the pendant's not connected and fire, fires up an alarm. I won't go away unless I restart the machine. It's the third restart today. Not making a ton of progress. It's been a slow one today. Okay, so we're decked off. Now it's to zero in off this new point. So we use this jobby for that. Not getting a good shot here because I can't hold the camera and do it at the same time, but I'm happy with where it is. Looking about right so far. This is what's known in the business as great success. So right now I am just <clears throat> deburring the edges of where the slot has gone through. As I mentioned earlier in the video, the steel that we're using for this is a bit tougher than your old regular steel. I think that's why the tap's not liking it. Because I just had another go with one of these with a, with a new tap and it still didn't like it. So. I drilled the hole out to 5.2 millimetres instead of 5 and it went through much better. Look, here they are. I think you'll agree they look a lot better with that shampoo on there, don't they? Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, we're just drilling this out to 5.2. Maybe I should put it in the vise for that. Let's do some tapping. I'm going to tap with the drill because I always have much more success tapping with the drill than I do by hand. I'm going to do the one that I don't need first, just in case. Watch now, I'll snap the tap in this one, won't I? Because it's the one that I need.
Yo, that's what we call winning. So these are the bits from the swing arm jig that these have got to fit onto. In next week's video, we're going to do some CNC tube notching as well as some manual tube notching. And then we'll sort of tack those tubes into the swing arm. So make sure you come back for that. As we all know, because you've already watched the first video, it has been my dream to build myself a downhill bike ever since I was a teenager. But I actually can't afford to do it, both in terms of money and time. The only way I figured it would be possible to tick this dream off the list was to make this YouTube series about it. And I'm hoping that these videos will generate some kind of revenue in order to make the time that I take away from paid jobs not kill the business. So this is where you come in. I need your help. If you think what I'm doing here is cool and you'd like to see it continue, perhaps you could consider hitting the website where there's a number of ways where you could support the project. I've got posters, £15 each, including postage. This is obviously a blueprint of the pinner. And this is Joel Anderson riding the pinner during that promotion video that he did for us. So yeah, 15 quid, including postage on the website. It's a nice cheap way for you to support the old project. Also got these EXT adjuster tools. So you've got 12 mil socket down the bottom, four mil Allen key on the top, fits in your pocket nicely so you don't have to take spanners out on a ride for you. They're 12 quid, including postage. I don't currently have any t-shirts in stock, but I'll make them available to back order and I'll get a shipment in and post them out once I get back from Sledming, which is like end of August, beginning of September. I also make and sell these trail tools, 100% made in the UK. These are all laser cut just down the road. Those are made in the UK. So are the handles. Basically a multi-tool for trail building. You've got a breaking edge this side, sharp edge here for cutting roots, and a sharp edge there that kind of acts like a bit of a pickaxe for breaking harder ground. 35 mil diameter handle, proper solid. 75 quid plus 20 quid postage on the website. Pretty expensive, but you'll never break one. And even if you do, I'll send you out a new one. And finally, if you're feeling super flush, you can put your name down for a hardtail frame. There's currently no frames on order at the moment, so, you know, shoe's pretty short. And I'll also put some links down in the description for anyone that just wants to make a donation without receiving any kind of product. I've only got PayPal set up at the moment, so yeah, go with that. If there's any others that you guys would prefer to use, put it in the comments. So yeah, as I mentioned, next video, we're gonna start on some tube notching for the swing arm. So uh, until then, keep it sideways.